hi, I'm Kelly from Kelly Jones Jewelry and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this super cool Viking bracelet. I absolutely love how it turned out. Everything you'll need is in the description below, so let's get to it. So I'll show you what I'm using today and then if you want to do it slightly differently with different gauges then that's entirely up to you. You can change it up to suit whatever it is that you're making. I'm using 0.315mm weaving wire for mine which is 28 gauge. If you want to use something a bit thicker then you'll need okay. something to do your weave, that your, your Viking weave onto. So I'm going to use a pencil. You don't want a rubber on the end. If your pencil has got a rubber on the end, then that's going to get trapped. I just did one. My rubber got trapped. And I had to. I ended up smashing this bit off. So if you're using it and you've got a rubber on the end, you need to smash that off. So you just, I'm going to be using a pencil today. You just need something with... That it's, a bit, it's a bit tattered looking now. But you need something with that kind of hexagony shape for helping you with your weave. But I'll show you that in a minute. And you'll need a pin. So I really struggled to get the weave through on um, some of the stitches. It was really tight. But if you use one of these big chunky, it's one of these huge chunky pins, um, it just makes it a lot easier to work really. You'll need some nice strong pliers. So I've been using like this thicker side of these bent nose. And obviously you'll need your cutters. And I forgot to mention, you'll need a draw plate. So I've got these beadsmith plastic um, draw plates to pull the weave through. You can, if you don't have these, you can just drill holes into a piece of wood. So you grade it down. Start with the bigger holes and grade it down because as we um, pull it through, we're going to pull it through each one to kind of just bring it down gradually into the weave shape. So yeah, you can make your own if you haven't got any of these. So I'm just using the wire straight off the reel. I don't normally do that because it gets all twisted, but. You're just going to loosely wrap the wire around your fingers and you want six loops. Very loosely. Two, three, four, five, six. And you want them all the same length. So then we're going to take the top and twist it. And then we're going to make this into our daisy to separate our petals a little bit so these just have to pull down so we've got six there we go we're going to pull on them a little bit because they need to be quite thin on the ends to get around the pencil. I'll show you that in a moment. So I'm focusing on doing the Viking chain for a bracelet so I want it. I want it quite chunky. If you want it really fine then you need to reduce all this down and you need to like make a smaller daisy and use a smaller tool. So as I'm using a pencil my pencil is quite thick. You could even use something bigger because you're going to put it through the uh, the draw plate. If you use something bigger and draw it through, it, you're going to have more wire so it's going to be tougher and less versatile. So I'm doing this for a bracelet. You can also use thinner wire to make it more flexible. I've used silver wire in the past. And I did find little bits kept breaking off of it. Because I was using two finer wires, so you do have to be careful. So we're going to position this in the middle. And we're just going to push the petals along the pencil. 
like so. And to hold that in place, I'm going to take some more wire. I'm just going to very crudely wrap around the whole thing. Come here. Nice and tight. And when if this comes off, which it does as you're working it, it's fine. Because then you've already got your chain established. There we go. That'll hold it on for now. I'm going to be using lots of wire on this one. We just need to spread the the little petals out so they go all the way around evenly. So you need to adjust that. So there's my makeshift little daisy. You can buy these tools, and they've already got this part on the top, so you know they're all going to be nice and even and same size each time. But I'm awkward. I like to make my own. Okay, so we need some more weaving wire. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna weave off about half a meter. So we're gonna pop this end of the wire through two of those petals. Bring that wire down and turn it around. So I'm working this way. Little monkeys popped out. I'm working this way. We want to loop there. So then I'm going to take the end of the wire, post it through the next two. Oh my little daisy petals a bit. Pull it all the way through. We're making another loop there. We're going to do this all the way around, go through two loops, pull it through, and then shape your loop at the end. I'm going to do like a double stitch so when I get to the end I'm going to go through the same one again I really like how the double stitch looks if you want to do a single stitch then you just go into the one below and then you go into the one when, when I'm saying go through I mean like I'm going to go through here this is a double stitch, so we go through the one above. If you want to go and do a single stitch, then you go through this one here. The single stitch, though, you can make it a lot quicker. It doesn't look as good. I'm going to go with the double stitch. And I'll explain a bit more as, as we go on. So I'm just going to go around again, catching on to that same I'm just doing exactly the same thing again.
So I've reached the beginning again here. So as I'm doing the double stitch, the double stitch is that you miss, instead of going through the bottom one, which is a single stitch, the double stitch is that you just go one up. So you go through here. That's the double stitch. So now I'm meeting back up, I'm going to go through the second one here, and that's my double stitch. So try not to pull too hard at the end. We want just a little bit of, give a little bit of shape on those wires. And I'm going to keep going around the second stitch here. So I'm just going to show you roughly what I've made here, doing the Viking chain that I used. And then I'm planning to show you the pendant, how to make the pendant that I fit onto it too. So we're just going to keep going around now. Not going into the bottom one, but going into the next one all the way around now i'm getting in quite well at the minute it's, it's going quite well if you find you can't get your wire through which i found a lot in the one i was just making if you can't get your wire through there that's where your pin comes into it you push your pin through there first and then you can follow it quite easily my pin gone. So here, I'm going to go through here. If you push your pin through first, that makes it a lot easier for your wire to just pop through there. So we're just going to keep going. So I've got to the end of my wire there, I'm just going to add a new one in and carry on from there. So I'm going to cut another length about half a metre. I just measured my wire and it's actually about 25 inches which is 60 odd centimetres so it's a bit more than half a metre. Didn't want it too long because it's too much messing about. We don't want it too short that we have to keep adding wires. So when we add a new one in we go this way. And that wire comes down and then this wire comes around and we can carry on. So I've finished, I've added that to the wire and I'm going to add a new wire. I'm going to go into the same place. And then I'm going to carry on with this wire and don't forget if it gets a bit tricky to push your wire through you can use your pin to lift the stitches a little bit give it a wiggle and then it's easier to get your wire through for a bracelet I'm going to do the length of the pencil roughly so I'm just going to keep adding and adding and adding and then I shall show you 
points to have, and I've added them all to the bottom. With these tail ends, just make sure they're coming down and just work over them as you go around so they end up inside. So I've continued to add wires and keep going around and around until I've reached almost the bottom of my pencil. I'm just levelling up my weaves a little bit. Or my wraps, whatever you want to call them. I've done all the rest of it. Just try and get it tidy. And I've got one tail end left here now. So now we need to um, draw it through the draw plate. So I'm going to take it off the pencil. And I'm going to start with the biggest one because I don't know how big it is. So the biggest one's nice and easy. I'm just using my fingers to pull it through at the minute. Depending on how big or whatever you used instead of the pencil, you start further down than me. Could jump and go a lot quicker, couldn't I? If I just jumped a few. So you can see it's starting to draw the weaves or the wraps down. I'm going to keep going. So I've gone all the way down and I've pulled it through the 4.5 because this is going to be a bracelet. I don't want it too thin. You can keep going. You could make it into like a necklace chain if you want to and go all the way down to the thinner sizes there. But I want it quite chunky. And as you can see, because I've used the, the 28 gauge, a 0.315 is actually quite flexible. Quite bendy. And this actually ended up looking quite nice. I mean, that'll be lovely when it's oxidised and you can see all the detail properly. Just going to finish off this end by pressing it over the end wires there. Crazy snowing her dog. She really is snoring really loud. I'm just going to press that over there. Just so it's held out the way. And I am going to make an end piece and I'll show you how I do that. So now we need to add like a cap on the ends. So we can attach them to clasps or a pendant or whatever it is. So we need to cut the little daisy off at this end. So we're just cutting the daisy, not the chain.
so now we've just got that end where we've attached onto the daisy and the other end is the bottom loops as we did the weave we've got two tidy ends so now we need to earn two short lengths of 0.8 millimeter wire which is 20 gauge we're going to need about four inches so we've got two lengths at four inches and those will do our hoops for the ends of the, the little caps there does that make sense 0.8 millimeter wire 20 gauge and i'm going to pop it through just a little bit lower than the end and i've gone straight through the middle so that's solid and then i'm going to bend my other pliers gone. Oh, here they are. I'm going to bend this up. So we've got both ends coming up like that, and then at the top. I'm going to take the short end and just go around the other one. We just need a single loop there just to hold it in place. You can wrap it around a few times if you want to. I'm just going to squeeze that around the end there. We'll do that for the other end as well, it's exactly the same. So I've done the same thing at that end too. So for the uh, the coiled ends, we're going to need 1.2 millimeter wire, which is 16 um, gauge. And depending on what size you took your chain down to you then need to work out which size of these works best for you so i'm going for one two three so i'm going for this third size from the smallest here and that fits around this size chain so you take your 1.2 millimeter wire and you want to wrap around that size of the bale pliers and as if you were making jump rings so we're just going to go around and around I'm working straight off the wheel. I think we want about eight or ten wraps. So we've got eight wraps there. I'm going to cut that top bit off because it's going to be weird. it back on the pliers for a minute we need the top one to come over that size and what I'm going to do because it needs reducing down a little bit just so it finishes off and grips on the bracelet I'm going to do it on the pliers so I've got the last one is just over the uh, top of the pliers there and I'm just going to gently squeeze it in Just the top one. I'm doing it a tiny bit at a time. So I just want the very end one to come just over the edge a little bit and not all the rest of it. 
Do you know what I mean? So that we're just squeezing it in a little bit on the top. Could do with doing it a bit more than that, but you get the idea. It's so hard to do it up close to the camera. I know I always use that as an excuse, but it is. So I've just squeezed the end one in a little bit. And if you've marked your wire, we can easily get that off in just a minute. You have to be careful doing it when it's not on the bail pliers, because if you slip, it'll, uh, it'll all crumple. So you can get those marks off with a nail buffer. As you can see, I buff a lot of copper with this nail file. And just use fine sandpaper if you have that handy. I've got lots of nail files. I don't need them on my nails at the minute because they're very short. So when you're happy with that, that's going to be on the outside and we pop that wire, the 0.8mm from earlier, and we're just going to gently push that onto the weave. So we need to get the other one the same size. Another thing you can do is you can squeeze this one in a bit. But if you squeeze it in too much, it'll crumple against the all that lovely weave there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it at an angle. And then just try and buff that down, that sharp edge off a little bit. Now looking at this end where the wire is, we're going to put a, a loop on that wire. So bend it the one way. I was going to use round nose pliers, but we're probably better off using bail pliers. bend it over that wire can't get it all the way round so I'm going to cut it no I'm not going to cut it actually because I was going to have it I'll show you what I planned so we need to get around and around the back there so we've got a complete loop and then we're going to hold the loop the best you can we're going to take this wire around the base of the loop. It just, I was going to cut it off originally, but this just gives it a bit more strength. Just take it around that wire at the base. And squeeze it tightly around the base of that loop. We've got ourselves a nice little loop on the end there. We've done the other one the same. So we're nearly done and I've just found I've got a little sharp bit sticking out. So you must explore it and see if you've got any little sharp bits. We can either curl this over so it's trapped in there or you can cut it off as short as you can knowing that all those little ends we left are quite long. Let's so have a feel and see if we've got any more sharp bits. Just 
So to make the clasp, I'm going to wrap around one of the smaller sizes so we get a small loop. Then I'm going to wrap around next to the biggest size. So we've got a bigger loop. Then I'm going to bend it like this here. Cut that off because I'm working from the reel. Make that end into a loop. Then we'll need a couple of jump rings. The one jump ring needs to be big enough for this loop to fit through. And the other one will just attach to this loop here. So I'm going to open up that loop. Pop the jump ring on it. And then that will attach to the one side of the bracelet and this will be on the other and it goes through there and it latches on and that's your, your little link.